My name's Chris, and these are the top five takeaways from Seth Godin's book, The Dip, a little book that teaches you when to quit and when to stick. Now, this is a great book if there's anything that you can think of in your life where you're wondering, is this something worth sticking with? Whether it's your job or school or a relationship, there's probably something in your life that you're wondering, should I quit now or should I stick through with this thing? Tip number five, ask yourself, are you strategically quitting or reactively quitting? Successful people strategically quit things in life. They make conscious decisions about the things that they're applying their life to that aren't gonna work out and they get out early. Reactive quitters tend to stay in too long and quit in a moment of panic or when things are way out of their control and they have to just abruptly eject. You wanna think about life in strategic quitting. Strategic quitting makes you smart. Think for a second about the famous Vince Lombardi quote, quitters never win and winners never quit. That's bad advice. Winners quit all the time. They just strategically quit. They know when to quit and they know when to stick through with things. Quitting tip number four. If it's worth doing, there's gonna be a dip. So the phrase the dip, which the book's named after, is this valley here that you see. When you start at the top of any new thing, it's gonna seem wonderful and magical and full of possibilities. And at the end, at the end of this, things, if they go well, will be successful and you'll be at the highest of highs. But anything worth doing is gonna have a big low. And you need to know that going into it. If it's a big enough challenge, if it's a big enough thing that you're biting off, you're gonna run into trouble. And you can ask yourself, is this a dip? The dip is the long stretch between beginner's luck and real accomplishment. The dip is a set of artificial screens to keep people like you out. Almost everything in life worth doing is controlled by the dip. Now, the two other curves that you might run into are what Seth calls the cul-de-sac, which is exactly what you think it is. It's basically going into a dead end and just staying with a dead end job, staying with a relationship, way too many days, weeks, months, years, lives, and then you know you need to be in. You're in a cul-de-sac, don't wanna be there. The third curve that you might find yourself in is what Seth refers to as the cliff. Now that's going up, 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 things are going really, really well, and then all of a sudden just <laughs> crash and burn. You have no more money, no more resources, maybe no more health if you are doing bad activities to your body every day. There's no turning back. That's also not a good situation to be in. So the dip is a good thing. It exists for all things that are worth doing, and it's just a question of whether you're gonna get through it or not. Tip number three. Be the best in the world. Seth Godin is a big proponent of this idea of being the best. He cites this example here of vanilla ice cream being four times more popular than number two, chocolate, and then way, way more popular than all the rest. And it's the same thing that happens for movies in the movie theater or the applicants that any college gets. It's the number one, it's that top 1% that are gonna get 10 times better results than everything that follows. You want to be number one. When Jack Welsh remade GE, the most fabled decision that he made was, if we can't be number one or number two in an industry, we must get out. Jack quits dead ends, and by doing so, he frees up resources to get his other businesses through the dip and to be number one. The reasons you'll fail to become the best in the world. You run out of time and quit. You run out of money and quit. You get scared and quit. You're not serious about it and quit. You lose interest or enthusiasm or settle for being mediocre and quit. You focus on the short term instead of the long and quit when it gets too hard. You pick the wrong thing to be the best of the world at. Maybe you don't have enough talent, so you quit. And the number one tip from the dip, tip from the dip, number one tip from the dip, if you can't make it through the dip, don't start. If you know right away that you are not gonna get through this thing when times get hard, why start? And more importantly, if you're looking at all the options out there of things that you can be the best in the world at, try to eliminate and find the things that you can be the best in the world at by saying no to the dips that you're not gonna make it through. Say no to the dips that you're not gonna make it through and instead be a superstar and get through the dips that you know you can get through. In closing, Seth Godin tells you, you're astonishing. He says, how dare you waste it? 
go ahead and make something happen right now. Find a dip that you can succeed in and be the best at the world. We're waiting. All right, this is the end of the video. What do I do with myself now? I'm ending. Well, you can click subscribe and you'll get more videos or or you can click another video and I'll keep talking or, or not. Oh wait, I actually had something important to say here. If you liked The Dip, uh, you can listen to this on the On Books podcast. That's my podcast. Go to on-books.com or iTunes. All right, so back to the, the YouTube.